Hey guys, Jeremy here with KISS Aquatic Systems. K-I-S-S, -S, keep it simple, stupid. So we're at the Koi Pond here, and uh, we are about to go into our first very serious heat wave of the summer. So the, uh, there's, a, there's a front coming in, and the next few days we're looking at uh, air temperatures with the high of the high 90s Fahrenheit and it actually is not going to cool off that much at night so the low at night is going to be uh, mid 70s Fahrenheit so we're looking at a period of uh, some very extreme temperatures here not great for the koi or the koi pond as you can see all my fish are uh, sulking over here and uh, there's a very good reason that they're sulking so a couple days ago, in anticipation of this heat wave, I set up my air pump right back there. And I set up the air diffuser with all the bubbles all the way back here, as you can see. And my koi have decided that they want absolutely nothing to do with those bubbles. They're gonna get as far away from those bubbles as they can. Uh, probably about 20 feet away right now and they're not willing to get any closer so my koi are all over here sulking and being mopey which uh, they really like to do anyway so I almost feel like this is just an excuse for them to mope to be clear I am pumping in uh, 0.8 CFMs of air into this pond through a fairly small diffuser and these fish which are really not small um, they are terrified. So that uh, that white one there, that platinum ogon, she's pushing three feet long. She could uh, probably rip apart that diffuser if she really wanted to. And uh, some of these other fish are, are not that far behind her. And yet here they are in the very far corner and it's been almost three days. So yeah, there's that. Um, Anyways, uh, the reason why heat waves are so dangerous for koi is that koi are very sensitive to dropping dissolved oxygen levels in the water. Koi are big fish that really guzzle oxygen. And uh, they like that dissolved oxygen at or above uh, at least eight milligrams per liter. Um, and uh, as we know, as water temperatures heat up, they can hold less and less oxygen at saturation. So, uh, yeah, that's why heat waves are, uh, can be a big killer of koi. Um, just looking at some of the, the numbers, the saturation numbers, at 30 degrees Celsius or 86 degree Fahrenheit of water temperature, you've dropped down to seven and a half milligrams per liter of oxygen at saturation. And, um, in a heat wave like we're going into now, you're very likely to get water temperatures in the low to mid 90s Fahrenheit, um, which can easily get you below seven milligrams per liter of dissolved oxygen at saturation. So obviously these numbers that I'm quoting here are oxygen levels at saturation and koi guzzle oxygen. So you're constantly battling, uh, especially in times like this, to keep the oxygen as close to saturation as possible, even though you're likely to stay below. So that's why these bubbles help. You're pumping air into the pond. You're creating more surface agitation. You're allowing oxygen to enter the pond and get you close to uh, saturation, which is really a maximum. So that's the uh, full process there behind adding the air pump. And the koi are not happy with me, but uh, they're gonna have to get over it because I'm not turning it off. So let's take a look at the pump. This is, as I said before, this is an uh, this is an air pump that does 0.8 cfm's of oxygen. Let's say hi to the coin. Hey guys, you're gonna have to uh, forgive me. Yeah, they're not gonna forgive me. I actually tried getting into the pond and moving them the other day to show them that the uh, the bubbles were not a threat to them. That didn't work out well. 
they're uh, a lot more afraid of the bubbles than they are of me, even if I was in the pond, uh, essentially trying to nudge them. Didn't work. So anyway, here's the pump. Uh, I set it up here, try to protect it from the rain, which we're supposed to get a little of, and uh, while also allowing some good circulation. So uh, these pumps are notorious for uh, shutting off an extreme heat, which can happen very easily, uh, especially if you don't have enough airflow um, around the pump. So that's the pump. I set it up above the water level, which is definitely recommended. I've run the airline around back behind the pond. Uh, that's running next to the conduit, which is uh, for my electrical over there. And the bubbles are all the way back here. The airline runs through the pond and we have the bubbles here. So that's the, uh, that's the setup. And uh, we're gonna have to get through this heat wave. And these koi are eventually gonna have to decide uh, to move. Hopefully within a few days, they'll get a little less skittish. They are actually eating. Uh, they kind of wait for the pellets to drift over to where they are now, which they do tend to do. And um, it actually looks like a lot of the smaller, younger fish are, uh, they're ready to go, they're ready to swim. But the two of my largest fish, which set the tone and lay down the law in this pond, uh, are not having any of it. So I'll get around a little bit closer. My Platamogon, who is a true jumbo, five-year-old, almost three foot long fish at this point. And uh, the orange Ogon, kind of shaped like a football, you can see back there, who's also well past the two foot long mark. They, they set the law, they set the tone for the school, and they have decided that they're not ready to accept the bubbles. But they'll change their mind eventually or they'll just stay here for the rest of the year. And uh, yep, yeah, hopefully we'll be good going into this heat wave, doing a lot of water changes, keep the pond nice and clean. Again, the objective here is to keep my dissolved oxygen as close to saturation as possible. And uh, having excess organic matter in your pond will make that harder because the bacteria that eat organic matter um, typically consume oxygen in the process. So keep the pond clean, doing lots of water changes uh, now, and also plan on continuing to do them through the heat wave. I've added that bubbler, and I am going to probably keep this thing running. Um, we're in late July, probably at least through August, because it's, it's usually pretty hot August here as well. And uh, then maybe shut it off in September when the weather gets a bit more mild. So. Yeah, folks, that's it. Just wanted to uh, share my preparations for this uh, heat wave that's coming and show you all how mopey and temperamental my, uh, my koi love to be whenever they're given the opportunity. So yeah, that's it, folks. Uh, hope you enjoyed the video. Take care, and as always, happy ponding.